I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank, and this is Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Of all the creatures to put in your tank between the fish, the corals, and the invertebrates, and not your dog, by far my favorite is sea anemones. There's nothing like seeing a sea anemone sway in the current of your tank, and it's even better when you can get a clownfish to host an anemone and you can watch the relationship between the two. So in this episode of Mr. Saltwater Tank TV, I'm going to be talking about anemones so that you can have success with them in your tank. Sea anemones are actually pops and have a symbiotic relationship with algae, such as the anemone gets the benefit of the photosynthesis from the algae, and the algae gets a safe place to live. There are over a thousand species of anemones worldwide, and I'm going to talk about the sea anemones for the aquarium, focusing on the most common, being bubble tips, long tentacles, and carpet anemones. Sea anemones have stinging tentacles that can take down fish and invertebrates, so yes, anemones eat flesh. Now, in my experience, bubble tips and long tentacle anemones rarely catch fish in your tank unless the fish directly swims into the anemone or the fish is very weak and gets too close to that anemone. Carpet anemones? That's another story. They're cold-blooded killers. I used to have a green carpet and it ate my wife's favorite fish, the pink spot goby. One touch of the fish to the anemone and it was gone. Needless to say, that carpet went bye-bye. Therefore, I recommend either a bubble tip or a lawn tentacle anemone for your tank to help ensure a peaceful tank. A piece of advice that you hear tossed around a lot around sea anemones is that you should wait until your tank is at least six months old before you put a sea anemone in it. Now, I couldn't find any scientific evidence behind why people say this, but I don't think that it's a bad idea. Certainly, letting your tank get set up, letting it get stable, letting it kind of get used to itself, so to speak, before you put a sensitive creature like a sea anemone in there, not a bad thing. This is especially true if this is your first saltwater tank. I absolutely recommend waiting at least six months before you put a sea anemone in there. Sea anemones can be sensitive, and you want your skills as a saltwater tank keeper to build before you put something more challenging in your tank. Let's take a look at each of the most popular anemones for a saltwater tank. Bubble tip anemones are mainly green or rose colored, and they attach themselves directly to rocks. Sometimes they're up high in your tank, sometimes they're down low. The question I get asked a lot is, why won't my bubble tip anemone bubble up? Good question. No one knows what makes a bubble tip anemone bubble or not. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Now if your bubble tip doesn't bubble, it's not a bad thing, so don't get concerned. Bubble tip anemones are very common and they're very likely carried by your local fish store. They also tend to be very hardy as well and make good picks for your first anemone. Long tentacle anemones look a lot like non-bubble tip bubble tip anemones, but long tentacle anemones attach themselves to the base of the rocks right at the sand bed. That's a dead giveaway that the anemone you're looking at is very likely a long tentacle one. Carpet anemones, well they also attach themselves to the base of rocks, and quite often their foot is dug into the sand and attaches to the glass on the bottom of your tank. Carpets can also get very large, and as I mentioned, they're also very good at eating fish. LEDs and sea anemones, do the two jive together? The answer is yes. Here's my sexy tank, powered by Eco Exotics Panorama modules. Now these LEDs are not super bright LEDs. They provide plenty of light, but they're not super high output LEDs. And the rose bubble tip that's here in the sexy tank, it's doing fine underneath them. In fact, it's, it's even flourishing, it's happy as can be. It's parked itself, it hasn't moved around. Every day it expands, it looks great, and it's getting bigger over time. It's telling me that it's happy. So will LEDs grow in enemies? Absolutely. Now, I can't sit here and say this manufacturer's LEDs will and that one won't because everything is so different in the LED world. There's not a, a guideline to follow, but I will say this. There's nothing wrong with giving your anemones a lot of light. Certainly the worst thing you want to do is give them not enough light because they are photosynthetic, remember. So if you have a CNMA you put in your tank, it comes up to the top every day, it's stretching out as close as it can to the surface of your tank, it's telling you that it's not getting enough light. Nothing's gonna hurt to put more light in on your tank. If it feels that it's too much light for it, it'll move down in your tank and find another home. So LEDs and anemones, absolutely. They will grow them, and it won't hurt to have extra lighting on your anemones. Sea anemone, SPS coral, do those two jive? Yes and no. Don't get me wrong, a sea anemone can certainly kill a piece of SPS if it parks next to it and stings it for a long enough amount of time. However, in my experience with my 90 gallon heavy SPS tank and my sea anemone, I've had my anemone move all over my tank. It's parked itself next to plenty of SPS colonies. It even sat in front of my Superman Monty colony for weeks at a time, every day expanding, stinging that colony. 
After a couple weeks, the sand enemy moved away. Superman Monty was happy as can be. Pops came back out and it continued growing. So will seeing an enemy take down a piece of SPS? Sure, if it's a sensitive piece, I suppose they can do it. I've never seen it happen. And if I had an SPS tank, I certainly wouldn't say, well, I'm absolutely not gonna add a scene enemy. Now, if you do add a scene enemy, you gotta do it with in mind that you're gonna have to watch it. If it parks next to a piece of SPS, you either gotta take the time to move the enemy or move the piece of SPS, or just be happy if it kills your piece of SPS. So it's a give and a take. Yes, they'll kill them, but I wouldn't rule an enemy out of an SPS heavy tank. And if you do wanna move in an enemy, make sure you don't tear its foot. Carefully and gently massage the foot of the enemy until it starts to let go. Then keep working until the anemone is free. If you tear the foot, then an enemy will likely die. My only complaint about sea anemones is that they truly have a mind of their own. They're like a stubborn stepchild. They're gonna do what they want, and you can deal with it, especially when it comes to moving around your tank. Because as try as you might, I've heard about people putting an enemy on the center of a rock, surrounded by a sand bed, putting the flow around it to discourage that anemone from move. If they wanna get out of there, they're gonna do it. I've seen them walk across rocks, I've seen them walk across sand beds, it doesn't matter. If they wanna get from this side of your tank to that side, they're gonna do it and you can deal with it. So if you put an enemy in your tank, be aware, it's gonna move around. Yes, it would be perfect if it was right there in the top, spread out here and be perfect. It might not be interested in doing that. And if it doesn't, it's gonna move over there and again, you can deal with it. And of course, if you do see your scene enemy moving around, especially if it gets close to a power head, add a sponge filter to your power head to help protect that anemone. Powerheads, they'll chew an enemies up just like that. I had one get destroyed in my powerhead. It's not a pretty thing. They can trash your tank. They can cause your tank to crash if it happens while you're away and if it doesn't get taken care of. So if they're gonna move around. They get close to a powerhead. Protect them with your piece of foam. And overall, remember, seeing enemies are creatures. They're animals just like your fish are. If you're gonna put one in your tank, see if it lives. If it doesn't, you're just gonna go, oh well, not for you. You shouldn't be putting an enemy in your tank. In fact, if that's going to be your approach to keeping saltwater animals, just go ahead and get out of the hobby because this isn't for you. Saltwater tank keeping is about responsibility, and that goes down even to your sea anemones. So that's an overview of sea anemones. I hope you guys have learned a lot. Certainly, I'd love to hear your anemone stories and your pictures as well. You can leave them right on my Facebook wall. Follow the link at the bottom of your screen. I'm Mark Callahan, Mr. Saltwater Tank. This has been Mr. Saltwater Tank TV. Till next time, have a good one. Enjoy your tanks and know your tank personality.